don't do that. <laughs> been like fully developed. Uh, and we would get MIDI files of songs and like oh, yeah. MIDI files of like Rust in Peace and like <laughs> yeah. Master of Puppets. Like somebody made this with their fucking keyboard over time. Yeah. Just go, I want to listen to Master of Puppets on my computer, but I can't listen to the song. So I'll just make it a <laughs> MIDI <laughs> file. Well, all of uh, Doom is uh, metal songs. Isn't it? <coughs> yeah. It's like uh, Behind the Crooked Cross, yeah. Slayer is the first one. And then I, I don't remember the rest. But yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's good shit. But yeah, uh, are we rolling sound yeah. sound check? Sound check. Check mic one mic check. Republic one two, Slovakia forever one two. Yep, we're, we're all good. Bill, 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 Bill. We're all good. Bill, Bill, Bill. Peter Piper, Piper Pepper, Pepper Pe- Pick Pick Pe- Pick a Pick Pick a Pepper, Pick a Pick Piper Pepper. All right, and welcome back to the Happy Fun Tongue Twister Hour. I am, of <laughs> course, your host, Bill. I'm joined with my faithful friend and colleague, Phil. And we have a new friend on the show today. I, I go by Filthy Phil from on. <laughs> filthy <laughs> Phil? I, I think it's better than Mr. Philip. I don't know. What do you guess? <laughs> that's that's Fil- perfect. How about Filthy Philip? No. Is that on your resume? No, I, I mean, that's what people called me in college, Filthy Phil. But uh-huh. I like Filthy Philip. It's got a little bit more class. How'd you get the nickname? Uh, I just did a lot of disgusting things. <laughs> I think I, I think I told that once the, the vibrator mishap. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, no, I can retell. I, I yeah, no. I, when I was in college, I was supposed to go on. Uh, or are we supposed to do the introduction? Yeah, let's, yeah. let's do yeah, introductions yeah, first before Anyways, we. Okay. And to my left, joining us for the first time, Cameron. Welcome. Hello, hello. I I ask this question to every new guest on the show. How familiar are you with our podcast? I know it exists. Perfect. I Perfect. should hope so. Uh, so I am excited. Yeah, so just a little bit of background information about what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, we strive to be an alternative news source. We we intend to be like intellectually stimulating, mm-hmm. as you'll find out after Phil tells his vibrator story yeah. later on. A lot of uh, Varg updates, right? Yeah, a, a lot of hate speech, a lot of profanity, I chain smoke. It's just a good, clean, wholesome Christian time. All right. Well, let's just mm-hmm. tone it down on the hate speech, and I'm in for it for, <laughs> for the rest <laughs> of it. All right. I always try to sneak the sneak the hate speech in, and no one no one's vibing <sighs> with it yet. So no, no, not gonna not gonna fly here either. <laughs> All right. So other than being uh, a coward about hate speech, what what else is going on in Cameron's life? What what do you do? Tell us. About let's start off with the easy questions. What is what is your social security number? Uh, it is a number, okay. and, and it will stay that way uh, until I pass. Oh, okay. Uh, or it is stolen. So, so far, mm. so good. No, okay. no, no stealing of my identity yet. Well said. Now, beyond your social security number, what do you do? Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. Um, I perform uh, across uh, the uh, Illinois area and uh, up into Wisconsin. I've gone to Missouri. I'm planning to go. Uh, Across the nation uh, in the next year, trying to set up some uh, tour stuff so I can go to different places and s- say my yuck yucks into the sure. unsuspecting crowd. Sure, and, nice. Uh, scream about cum as I'm often want to do. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, but no hate speech. Just, no, no hate speech. Just lots of jizz. Lots of jizz. Lots of restaurant references. Weird characters. Absurd thoughts. Um, making the the people of America uncomfortable um, with my super gay material. It'll sure, be very fun. Mm. Uh, that sounds fun. Where is the best place you've performed and the worst place you've performed? Um, that's a tough question. Best place I perform, I, I do a lot of like DIY punk shows um, in like the suburbs and in Chicago. As and, in like comedy opener or? Uh, yeah, like um, I, I've done places like uh, the Nacho Treehouse and the Shack. Um, I've done a few places in Chicago that no longer function anymore. Um, is it Wally's? No, um, I, I've done stuff at like the Mutiny before, which is awful. Uh, every single time, shout out to everyone who runs the Mutiny open mics. Those are fucking <laughs> yeah. terrible. Uh, they're and actually our sponsor for this episode. So. Great, yeah, f- oh. fucking horrible place to do comedy. Oh man, um, but yeah, like those spots are probably my favorite, just because like the crowd is super into it. Um, they're willing to listen. Like they're going out of their way to get the address, to find it, to go see music, to go see stand up. Um, and they're very supportive, and th- those are the type of people who come up to you afterwards and go like, "I fucking loved your shit," or like, you know, I, I really vibed with everything you were saying. And like, mm-hmm. they're very down to earth, like people who are willing to like, you know, sit and talk to you and get to know you afterwards. But on the same same course, the, probably the worst place I've done comedy was um, 
this place called the Fallout um, in Pilsen. Um, they had no door on the bathroom. Ooh. Um, it was just a garbage bag with a hole in it. <laughs> there was no toilet seat on the, the toilet in the men's restroom. It was just stickers on the toilet, um, and people would just kind of piss together, and it's like, I'm not... I don't want to do that. Did they shit together? Oh, no one shit. I don't think <laughs> anyone took a shit there at all. Sounds um, like my work bathroom. Yeah, um, it was uh, very crazy. People were doing cocaine at the merch table. A lot of the people didn't know comedy was happening, so we did it in between bands. And like, while I'm up there doing comedy, a bass player for a band is like tuning his bass loudly. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, Christopher Squire, get the hell out of here. How did it sound? It was awful. It was annoying. Really? Was, he was just like, sorry, dude, I got to tune it. I'm like, I know how instruments work. You can tune it silently. Yeah. <laughs> and like to get the crowd like to even pay attention to me, like I stuck the microphone in the speaker and just started doing feedback. And people were like, what the fuck, man? I'm like, hey, I'm doing shit right now. Yeah. Let's maybe listen. And then, like, I got off the stage in the crowd confronting people, just roasting them. <laughs> and it was just, like, it ended up being okay. But, like, there were some places, I, you know, now that I think about it, the worst place probably had to be in Bradley, Illinois. There was Ooh. this place called the Looney Bin. The crown was, jewel of the Midwest comedy scene. Oh, God, it was fucking awful. <laughs> I was just even talking about this on uh, um, with a friend just a few days ago that, we were doing a comedy competition, and even the guys running the competition were like, oh, this is going to go poorly. Like, because we got there, and there were two people there, and they were there to watch the Packers game, and they wouldn't turn the game off. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's did you do the there. feedback trick? No, I, I just well, like, and I had to like been like in the midst of a comedy like break. I was trying to take some time off just like for my mental health, and like, oh, I forgot I booked this, so I just come out and do this. And the whole time I'm up there, no one is listening but the comedians, and they aren't even laughing at anyone. No one's <laughs> laughing at anyone. Oh, that's good. And like, then a comic went up like a few comics after me, and uh, he has cerebral palsy. He used canes to walk. Josh Chuboff, very funny dude. Check him out. Um, and what like, was the name one more time? Uh, Josh Chuboff. Very funny dude. Um, but he's up there, and there are people like I can hear people like that have walked in just like making jokes about him instead of like laughing uh, oh. at his jokes. They're laughing at him, and it was just like, mm. oh, this whole experience is dog shit, and the people here are garbage. Yeah, and I fucking hate this place, and I want to be done with it. I don't care if I go to the next round. Like, fuck this place, fuck these people. Yeah, and I, I will say it to their faces: fuck the Looney Bin. That place sucks. It's the kind of competition where there are no winners. Yeah, there were no winners, <laughs> and like the whole time, all the comments were like, well. Fuck this. Like, <laughs> like, that's why comedy competitions need to not happen because they just fucking always suck. And then, like, people will just pack the crowd with their friends. And it's like, oh, this guy's yeah, been doing yeah. six that months has 30 friends. <clears throat> and, like, it's just, it's garbage. Comedy's not a competition. It's, it's just fucking entertainment. Like, that, let me that, do what I'm. That sounds do. like every show I ever played, like, yeah. in, in, musically. Yeah. Like, all your friends come, and, or, or, or all this other band's friends come. Even even if like you're the first band, oh, we're gonna stand outside and smoke oh, yeah. till no, the last that, band. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. Oh, like, quick thing, uh, you gotta have the mic close. I just remember mic uh, close. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could uh, adjust it like higher, just like two inches. Yeah, yeah, like oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Okay. Don't be afraid to fuck it up or anything. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, that's one of my biggest pet peeves is bands like who have friends come to see them and then the friends don't even watch any of the other bands yeah, yeah like i've had friends ask me like oh when are you on on this show so we can come up to see you i'm like no come at the beginning and stay the whole time and they're like well we want to see you i'm like that's fucking great see everyone else because you might see someone who's way funnier than i am yeah and you will enjoy them and go oh I've n i never would have given them a chance had my friend not told me to stop being a fucking asshole yeah and come and enjoy the entire experience I, these people are booked for a reason. They're like, give them the chance because you might find your new favorite comedian, your new favorite band, yeah. and be delightfully surprised with something you never would have given a chance because you're a piece of shit. What uh, what my family likes to do whenever I perform and they come out, and I love this, they'll sit and chit chat through every other comedian oh. until I go on, <laughs> and then they will rotate to face the stage, and then they're all eyes and ears on me and everyone is dying at every joke and then as soon as I get off stage back to their yeah. chit-chatting with each other no if I have anyone come to see me which they rarely do at all oh. like uh, I don't give a shit if they I've seen come you see me at all. yeah like if That's people a bad marketing strategy <laughs> you want people to come see you. I want people who aren't my friends to come see me like I love my friends they're super supportive of everything but like they don't need to see me they've seen me a million times they saw me when I sucked when I first started out so it's like 
I don't care if you come to see me unless it's super important to me that you come see me. Mm. But like, if people do come to see me and they're talking in the crowd, I will come up to them and go, shut up. Yeah, cut it out. And they're like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, shut the fuck up. And you, you probably people got the performing. ability to roast them too. Oh, yeah. Like, about- I don't care who you are. If you're talking during <laughs> my set or you're talking during someone else's set, I will fucking tell you to shut up. Yeah. Like, I just did a set um, last week and there was a kid in the front row on his phone in the middle of my set and I was just like hey man get the fuck off your phone and like I turned to continue doing talking and everyone like kind of looked at him and started laughing and mm. he was like oh, oh sorry man I'm like hey man I'm up here I can see you if you're in the back of the room I don't give a shit it's still rude like I understand people are texting you you're trying to get your friends out whatever yeah. that's cool but if you're just on your phone in the front row <laughs> openly disrespecting me it's like I don't care if you don't find me funny but if you don't do it somewhere else. Go go away. Don't be in the front row on your goddamn yeah. phone like, oh, well, fucking Instagram. <laughs> Just get the fuck out of here. Like, because that's rude to anyone. I, I, I fucking love when roasts like that spontaneously happen. Like, I recently, I, I, I watch like every, I give every comic a chance, even if it's like, oh, well, their last special was bad or this one's good. And I was watching uh, like a new Andrew Dice Clay. Oh. And these, these two guys who were in front. <laughs> You're a big fan? T- I do not like <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay at all. <laughs> well, well I, I mean, I just, um, that you know, like you know what his fans are gonna be like, yeah. huge fucking meatheads. Yeah, like, who are gonna yell? Oh, I want to hear some women getting beat. You know. Yeah. And there's these two like really fucking buff ass bros on their phones front row, and he's just like, "Oh, look at these guys. They're probably texting each other, eh?" And and they were not expecting to be fucked with. Oh yeah. And, like I was like, I hope a fight breaks out. There, there's sometimes where people are in the crowd and they're like they yell something out, and it's like that's it. They're just gonna yell something out, and you're like, "Whatever, I can roll with it." Yeah. And like, there's some people who just think they're the fucking attention, like they're funnier than everyone there, and they need to be heard. Yeah. And no, you then don't sign the fuck up. I I have had some fucking interesting people during my shows, like just say some of the most outlandish, crazy bullshit. I've had a guy try to fucking fight me before because <laughs> he didn't. He thought I like the way the set started. I was doing a joke about like how I'm queer and, like, how I found out and, like, the whole development of it. And, like, the the crux of the joke is, like, I'm sucking a dick. Sure. And the dude was just like, fuck you, man. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what? And he's like, fuck you, you fucking Jew, you fucking Trump supporter, you fucking yeah. faggot. And yeah. I'm like, holy shit, okay, Truth. one of those things is true. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know why two of those things are bad. And we all know what the two things that aren't bad are. So I, what the fuck? I'm like, I didn't vote for Trump. Fuck him. He wants to erase me. Um, I'm not a Jew. Why is that an insult? And yeah, I'm talking about sucking a dick. What of it? And he's like, fuck you, man. I'll kick your ass. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Calm down. And then like, he started approaching the stage. And luckily, like the bartender and like, owner of the bar was like no you're getting the fuck out of here man yeah and i'm like jeez like this dude was ready to fucking just come up and beat the shit out of me but he said that to you or the he guy approaching to, to the... the the guy approaching the stage okay. he's like you're out of here he's like because i there was a guy I, i've worked with a million times and he was just like no i respect you i'm not letting this dude say this shit but like some comedy clubs and some venues just be like oh they're just having some fun no this dude is yeah. a drunk belligerent asshole you can't like you can't let people fucking disrespect like anyone like that yeah like if a band was playing and somebody tried to get up on stage and go oh i can do it better you'd fucking kick that guy out like yeah. immediately so why should a fucking comedian have to deal with someone going eh, fuck you you're not funny i'm gonna say hateful shit to you no i've i've, I've only done stand-up like maybe seven times total because it's just not working out for and and i i do think i can't handle hecklers and but like the phone thing it's weird it like it doesn't bother me it's weird but i realized how much how bad it is because like <laughs> the one, the funniest time I, I went to go see Tom Green with my buddies, mm-hmm. and it was at Zany's in Chicago. So it's really small, and he was like, he really fucking hates technology. Mm. So his whole thing was bitching about how much he hates people go to this show and they're to go to any show and they're texting, mm-hmm. and I'm like recording him. I have my phone in my like crotch <laughs> recording him. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> He's looking at all these other people, but he hasn't caught me. And then I rewatched the video the whole fucking time. He's watching my phone, <laughs> and then and then I didn't realize that later. I didn't realize that like until I realized that that when we took a picture together, he had his hand like this, and it, and uh, uh like like he had his hand around us, Bill, for like if you can't see, but he um. He's flicking the camera off, mm. like fuck these. The, yeah, this was the phone watcher, and he doesn't even know it, you know. But I don't know. I I just never. 
Or I went to Watain, and he got mad that I was filming, so he threw blood at me. At my, I mean, so. you know, to each their own. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, like, when I first started doing stand-up, I did it at uh, a place I run a show called The Drunk of Donut. That's like, where you started? Yeah. I started doing oh, the open awesome. mic there, and it's a mixed open mic, so I would go on in between bands, and everyone got 15 minutes. So, like, nice. I was going up doing garbage material for 15 minutes, but the crowd there was either 100% on your side, ready to sit and listen, or they were belligerent and all excited from the last band, so they were going to start saying shit to you. So, like, I was thrown into a fucking, you know, wolf's den of people ready to just fucking go at you. So, almost every time I perform, I'm like, you know what, I got like seven or eight minutes of shit I actually want to work on. Mm. The rest of this, I'm just going to bounce back with the crowd because I know they're going to fucking try talking to me. I know they're going to try and interrupt me or say shit or like try to like make a joke at me. So I'm ready for it. So I'll just fucking crowd work them. And like the last time I went there for the open mic, there was a group of like maybe 12 very drunk massage therapists who were there for a friend's birthday. And I'm like I started with my material and they were like kind of vibing with it, kind of not into it. But there was this one girl who was like just yelling shit the whole time. So I was like, fuck it, let's go with this. And I spent the next 13 minutes just roasting them in conversation and they loved it. So, and I'm like, I'm trying to work on material, but fuck it. I, if I have to deal with rowdy people, I will deal with them, and I will control them the whole time mm. and not let them try and come and take the mic from me. Like, they, you can stand up here, but I'm going to fucking control this. I am running the goddamn room. So you mentioned explicitly that they were massage therapists. Was that... Like, did they tell you they were massage therapists, yes, or could like, you tell? They, I, I was, I was trying to just be like, "Hey, man, what's your name? What do you do?" And everyone was like, "Oh, you know, I'm, I'm J- Jeanette, and I, I'm a massage therapist." I'm like, "Oh, cool, like you know, do this and that, like just make some jokes with them." Yeah. And then I move on to the next person, I'm like, "Hey, man, what's your name?" And he'd be like, "Oh, you know, I'm Mark or whatever." And I'm like, "So what do you do?" He's like. I'm a massage therapist. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So, are you serious? He's like, yeah, dude. I'm the manager at the massage therapy place she works. And I'm like, okay. And then I started moving along. Other people are like, oh, you know, I'm also a massage therapist. I'm like, what the? F- is there a convention? What the <laughs> yeah. fuck is happening right now? And they're like, oh, we're all here for a party for a friend's birthday. And I'm like, so everyone in this room is a massage therapist. Yeah. Like, yeah, pretty much. Like, this so the is heckling's gonna be like, you can't use that joke twice. <laughs> yeah, right. it's just right. like, okay, I gotta think of like a million fucking jokes right. uh, for massage therapists yeah. now. Touchy subject. Yeah, ex- <laughs> exactly. It was, uh, it was weird. It was a weird experience, but memorable. Yeah, very memorable. You so. know what I noticed about like, I mean, I, I go to sh- like whenever I'm in the city, I'll be like, before I leave, I'll be like, oh, I'll go to a stand up thing for some for people that I don't fucking know at all. Mm-hmm. Just to support, and I realize, like, I'm not. I, I don't kiss people's asses. I think Drunken Donut is like a great fucking thank you vibe there because everywhere I've went, like, I think I, I'm not. I'm not gonna name directly where, but I've gone to places where it's like, okay, this place, all the comedians there are friends, and they're only gonna laugh at each other. Everybody mm-hmm. else is like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. You don't hang out with us. You don't fit in. Or you go here, and it's like this place only wants. Like political jokes or something, or this mm-hmm. and drunken donut. It feels like you could go to every extreme, and people will kind of like understand. Will will give work into uniting with you rather than like that's fucking bullshit, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, we don't have a lot of comics at that show that are like trying to like you know be edgy or be over the top and try and do something you know to like rustle people's feathers at all yeah but like everyone has a different perspective and like one of the things we try to do is like have different people with different backgrounds and different like experiences in life but also just doing straight stand-up yeah like we've had some more experimental stuff but like it's everyone trying to go out there and say you know their piece and their experience and express themselves and represent themselves and the crowd is more open to all types of material if they're getting that consistently yeah and like that room is very warm and very welcome to a lot of people and like there are some people like some of the regulars who are pretty fucking crazy and out there but yeah. they still respect us and like if if you're bringing your shit and you're honest and you're trying your best and you're not trying to just fuck around that room can be rewarding for people because you know everyone in that crowd is like all right you're here to entertain me do it yeah. So if you're not going out there, you know, throwing your fists and ready to bring your A game, you're not going to get anything from them. But if you're mm-hmm. really trying, you're going to get a lot back from that crowd. And like that's why it's so fun producing that show. Yeah. And like that whole room and that environment is such a weird fucking place. Yeah. So 
I've seen comedians walk in and like they've done bar shows before. They've done like whole. It's those free bar donuts, shows. man. It's it's free donuts. An old off the boat Polish dude is like, "Hello, welcome to Joliet Bakery," and like <laughs> and like there's fucking donuts. There's cheap booze. There's pigeons out back. He's got a dog roaming around. Like there's a puzzle of Pope John Paul II on like behind yeah. the stage. There's a Polish <laughs> eagle. There's a picture of it's... all the presidents. There's Jimi Hendrix and John Wayne, and then there's punk stickers fucking everywhere yeah. and fly for shows and like we've had hippie bands hip-hop acts metal groups like all sorts of shit come through that room and everyone's just like it just feels like anyone can be here and anyone can fucking do what they want to do and it's safe to do it and we're all gonna have a good time and respect each other yeah and like that's why that room is so fucking wonderful it's like sometimes it can really suck like it could get some weird fucking dirty people in there because it's Joliet and we're a dirty, weird blue collar <laughs> town with a bunch of extremes. But it's got this vibe of like you come in here and it's different. It's not just another bar. It's a place. Where That's what I'm saying. Like I, I get the vibe in this city where um, obviously because of like in social environment and shit that wherever you go, even if it's called stand up in the city, it, it seems more like people are there to do more of like a spoken word about things they're angry about. Rather than like, okay, let's just hang out and have some laughs. I don't yeah. know. I mean, there are some places in the city that are like that, that like people are trying to um, say something rather than tell a joke, but yeah. you find that fucking anywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, the, the more. Or maybe you, they're just a bad comedian. Right? Yeah, there, there's, there's bad comedians everywhere. They're like, it's just Chicago is a hub for comedy. Like outside of New York and LA, Chicago is like the biggest city for comedy. And yeah. It has exploded. With comedians, like there are more comedians in Chicago, I think, than there have ever been in Chicago. I, I and got, there's shows and open mics that were like thirty deep at an open mic plus. Yeah. You know, shows you have like six or seven comedians all trying to cram in and do their shit, and it's hard to stand out. And there's some shows where it's everyone just trying to express their opinion, yeah. and other shows where it's like this is for stand up, and we're here to do comedy, and we're here to entertain people. Yeah. And yeah, there's some of those rooms where it's like a bunch of the free speech assholes are like, I'm going to say whatever I want because that's what comedy's about. And then there's that's people me. who are like, I'm going to police everything <laughs> because I don't think certain things are funny at all. Yeah. And there's the rooms that meet in the middle that are like, all right, if you're going to say whatever you want, make it funny and don't be an asshole and attack yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you can you can police people and try and stop them from saying certain things, but also understand that comedy is trying to relieve the tension of those bad things. So you have yeah. to meet in the middle and go, you know, if I'm going to do this crazy controversial topic, I have to make it funny and I can't make light of the thing. I can make light of things around the thing. Mm -hmm. And Chicago has the extremes on both ends and places in the middle where we can go, yeah, this is comedy. We can challenge the status quo, but we can also do it in a respectful way where we're yeah. not just going, I'm telling jokes about the gays and the queers or, oh, this is a funny joke about black people. It's like, no, fucking yeah. make it a joke. Don't just have an idea. Don't just police everything. And yeah. Like, I'm not one for wanting to joke about crazy, like, offensive shit. I used to be really into, like, offensive humor. Mm -hmm. But, like, I've dialed back on it, and it's like, you can be offensive, but be thought-provoking. Yes. Yeah. Like, don't just try and fucking say the crazy off-the-wall shit and expect everyone to vibe on it. Yeah. Fucking listen to yourself and understand what you're trying to say and say it in a way that everyone can understand where you're coming from, you know? Yeah. So you've mentioned how your own style has kind of progressed and evolved and how you used to do this and now you're more of this. When you started in comedy and I guess now, do you have any influences or like comedy role models? Yeah. Um, some of my favorite comics, uh, I really love Maria Bamford. Um, I love her absurdity, and but I said it, it's absurd but honest as mm -hmm. well. Like it's her being herself in a weird character-like way. Um, I love Eugene Merman. Um Pat Oswalt, uh, Kyle Kinane, I think is one of the best probably ever to mm -hmm. do it. He is a wonderful storyteller, but he does it with a, a colorful language and an honest language. Um, and he's just, every time I've seen him, he's been hilarious. And everything I listen to by him is fucking great. Um, I really like um, uh, George Carlin, you know, one of the, one of the best. Yeah. Don't always agree with 100% of what he says, but like that goes back to like, it, like if you the can't, setup, yeah, right. it's a setup and preparing for what you're saying, so you can get where they're coming from. Um, and it's funny because he puts him, so he puts you in the in the place of an old grouchy old man. Yeah. So yeah. like, 
it, you <clears> might <throat> not agree with him, but like I, th one of the things I always say, say to other comics is like, if you can't make people who disagree with you laugh, you're there's something missing there. Yeah, like, like you're pushing some agenda. Pretty yeah, much. like. I know a lot of very funny comedians who are on the extremes, but they can't make people who disagree with them laugh. Mm -hmm. And I used to be on both extremes where it's like, I don't want to entertain those people. I don't right. want those people to laugh at me. But I've done some rooms, um, like in the Burbs specifically, where it's like, I don't think these people are going to like what I'm trying to say. I, these are you know, normal, like middle-aged, working-class people who just want to laugh. They don't want an agenda, and they don't want someone who's going to go, I agree with everything you agree with, and just kind of cater to them and pander to them. Yeah. So if you go out there and say your piece but make it funny and do that, you can entertain people who don't agree with you. And I've had people come up to me after shows and go, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, don't, I normally wouldn't find queer comedians funny. Mm. I don't, I'm not gay or I, you know, I don't know anybody who's gay or I don't know anybody like that. I don't know these words and I'm not used to it because it's not something I'm surrounded by. But like you made me laugh at a thing I didn't really think I would laugh at. Yeah. Mm. And you made me think about something in a way I wouldn't think about it and you humanized it for me. Yeah. And like I've had people legit go like, you kind of changed my mind on some things. You made me understand a thing more than I wanted to understand it or more than I thought I could understand it. Yeah. And comedy can do that. Like, if you're not trying to push the agenda, like you're saying, and you're just trying to express yourself and how you think and you make it a funny thing, you can actually change people's minds and agree with people who might disagree with you. Yeah. Now there's those people who are going to fucking just, nope, don't like it. Yeah. And they're going to tune out and they're going to hate you or they're going to say some shit to you and that's going to fucking happen. That's life. Yeah. People are going to disagree with you no matter what you do. But if you do it in a funny way, you're going to turn some heads and you're going to make people laugh at shit that they didn't think they were going to laugh at. And I've had comics who like I disagreed with the, the idea mm -hmm. of what they're talking about. But they've made me laugh with it, and that's that laugh. You're like, God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> you kind of just go, I didn't want to laugh at that. <laughs> but if you laugh at it, because yeah, yeah. You, like right. you know that it's not coming from a hateful place or something. Like, yeah, you can yeah. be challenged by something that's more avant-garde or more offensive or something that's coming from that place because it's a joke, and you know it's a joke. Yeah. And you can tell there's those people who just come out there and say hateful shit or who are saying like spiteful. That, like, dude, that's my problem. Uh, and coming like that was <laughs> Bill's feedback is like. And I don't know what it like. Like I, I, I had a lot of issues growing up that I'm just like most of my life I spent trying to defend myself. Mm -hmm. So it was really hard to, to like. Okay, this is hateful. This isn't funny. Yeah, you know, it makes me laugh because I'm not getting made fun of. You yeah, know? <laughs> like, but but like, yeah, it's it's hard to find that medium. Yeah, you know? yo, you're when you're trying to. It, to express it, it, yourself, it, it, it you almost have to find a voice that is humorous. Yeah, it, it it almost made it easier for me to look at it like instead of go out there. And make things that maybe aggravate you more aggressive. Try mm -hmm. and make it fucking silly. Yeah. To, to, for everybody to fucking yeah, like relate to. I am an aggressive, loud comedian. I get worked up. I have an extreme. It's like a ride of energy. It's up and down with how I deliver things. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, it's sometimes it's innocuous, stupid things I'm getting upset about. But I'm doing it in a way that's like, it's just, it's entertaining. It's not hateful. And sometimes it can come off as just like, why are you just so angry about that? But you have to entertain with that. You have yeah, to yeah. make that a funny, silly, absurd anger because mm -hmm. you're trying to make people laugh. You're not trying to yell at them. Yeah. You're yelling about a thing to them. Yeah, right? and if people can see like, oh, this is fun, silly anger. It's silly yelling about like a fucking penigans. Like that's... It's a stupid thing to yell about, but it's entertaining if you do it in the right way. I think it depends on the Bennigans. Exactly. Right? <laughs> it's 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 weird, but I that's that's the as the journey of learning comedy is like what are you wanting to talk about and how can you honestly talk about it in a way that expresses honestly what you think and honestly what you feel, but doing it in a way that's lighthearted and still fun and you can talk about a serious thing and be serious, but you have to realize that you're like you're relieving the tension. Yeah, like, uh, I know a lot. There's a lot of comedians who are divided on uh, Hannah Gadsby's uh, new special, Nanette, where it's like some people are like, oh, it's not stand up because she talks at the end and she doesn't really tell jokes. But I don't even I, know who she who she is. She's, is a, she's a comedian from um, 
Australia and she released this a whole special called Nanette and the end of it is like the crux of it is comedy is relieving tension I can talk about a serious thing and build up the tension and everyone's like oh god oh no are we, are we gonna are we, are we, is it gonna be relieved are we gonna relieve this tension and comedy goes yeah I'm gonna relieve that but the whole point of hers is like sometimes I just don't want to relieve that tension because the tension needs to be there because we need to talk about the thing yeah and I thought it was a brilliant um performance i thought was very well written and there are jokes in it it is funny but there's a lot of people who are immediately going to disagree with it because they think she has an agenda with what she's saying Mm -hmm. and maybe she does maybe she doesn't i don't fucking know can you be like more explicit like what was she building tension about um like she has a bit about separating the art from the artist like people go i don't want to be uh, I don't want to get rid of like Picasso because he was uh, a piece of shit and his work is, is important. It's like, yeah, yeah, Picasso's work was very important, but he also was horrible to women. Every woman in his life he treated like garbage. And it's like, there is that battle. There is that tension of like, Guernica is an amazing piece and it challenged yeah. a lot of things and it's very important to art, but Picasso was a garbage man. <laughs> he sure, was a yeah. piece of shit. We, we, we talked about this, how like, I, I always love meeting my idols Mm -hmm. and and just for the fuck of it i mean it's just it feels great especially when i was a kid and like in order almost Mm -hmm. every like top five idols are such fucking pieces like pricks Mm -hmm. you know and 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 it's almost harder to like when you like it it makes whatever song that was important by that person like say if it's a musician it's like wait a minute they're coming are they coming from this you know from, uh, are they writing a song for me from my standpoint or are they writing for, from their you know because you know they're a complete cocksucker so yeah are they coming from that yeah so it's i don't know yeah that's that's the difficulty of of creativity and of art like not every creative person is an asshole but a lot of them ended up being an asshole and you started realizing that and it's like we can call them out for that shit and you can appreciate the art but there's some people that it's i don't want to appreciate their art anymore because I know what kind of person they are. Like I used to be really big into David Bowie growing up. Yeah. And then like once he died and like I started hearing more shit about his past and things he's done, it's like, you know what? That art isn't important to me anymore because I know the person it came from and whatever you want to do with that, that's your choice. Mm -hmm. I don't want to consume his art anymore. I don't feel comfortable doing it. I don't like there's some people like I like we were talking before. I love black metal, but a lot of black metal musicians are fucking horrible yeah. dudes. Sure. So it's like trying to find art that's coming from people that aren't difficult, horrible, yeah, shitty yeah. assholes. <laughs> and it's going, yes, this piece of music made by this band was great, but they're shitty dudes. So now here's my question. Like with regards to separating the art and the artist, if that is something that matters to you, then does it become where you can't appreciate the art without first understanding the artist you so before you check out a new album do you have to like do research on the artist like do they meet your moral standards that's that's too intense for me yeah. like if i like something i hear or something i see or something i watch anything like that i will enjoy it I and mean, i will investigate if i have the time but you can't exhaust yourself yeah i there is a limit to going, I can't research every single songwriter, musician, yeah, right. maker of everything. That's just, I, I think it's, just, I mean, I, I don't want to, whatever, get off a subject, but I just, I, I fucking hate this whole, like, petty thing that is going on recently. I don't, Tom be, Petty? No, not pe- Tom Petty. No, just the whole idea, just this nitpicking of going up someone's asshole with a microscope. Like, to me, this like, is just me. What do you mean? Uh, 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 about having to research all. Uh, okay, where did that come from? Who wrote it? What? Uh, oh, well, well, that's biased writer. You, you know, it's just like, where do you fucking draw the line? Yeah, you know? it, it becomes exhausting. Like, it always comes back to this idea that I always tell people that's like been mimetically destroyed by the internet, but it's like there's no ethical consumption under the world of late capitalism. Yeah. Like, the, the society that we live in, there is exploitation, there is dark, dirty things happening, there are people who are bad. And the more you try to consume in an ethical way, the less you be able to consume because it's like, where do you draw the line? It's like, I don't want to consume art by someone who's a piece of shit. Totally understandable. Do I want to use this item that I know the company exploits workers in a third world country to get? Do I want to use this, uh, you know, food item even though I know it comes from a country where the government yeah. corruptly destroys the people and it's destroying their economy, their land, everything. Do I want to, you know, 
be a part of a system that is continuously destroying people, but also churns out amazing things. Do you? Yeah. I I personally have greater good. Uh, I want the greater good, but also like I want to destroy the system and burn everything to the ground and sure. kill everyone and eat the rich. Yeah. But like I know there's a lot of unattainable nature to that, and there's mm-hmm. flaws everywhere because humans are a flawed creature in an idealistic system they're trying to perpetuate. Yeah. And I don't want to say that we'll never be able to get rid of corruption and evil and dis- exploitation. I wish we could, but I'm also realistic in knowing that no matter how hard we try, there's always going to be a new problem. So we have to continue to fight the problems that exist now and hope to limit yeah. those things as best we can and stop those things. We're not going to eradicate evil like as the idea like nebulously exists, but... You have to be able to let yourself just get a break because the more you try to fight these things, the more it's going to fucking wear on yeah. you. It's just like, a pendulum. It's a pendulum. And, and like I mentioned uh, in like various episodes before that, my stance on it is I took a, I, I sort of read a lot about Buddhism and Taoism mm-hmm. and meshed it together to make my own type religion mm-hmm. about just simple balance. Yeah. So when I see like both groups quarreling to me, I mean, I'm just kind of like, this shit's going to happen. Peace is going to happen with consequence of war and vice versa. Like you need yeah. both. It's everything and, is going to nebulously evolve together yeah. and you have to not exhaust yourself. You like, it's so hard to try and fight all the time. Yeah. And it, it's just, you need to give yourself a break. Sometimes you need to just go, I need to turn off for a second. And then it's not to say I can turn off forever and just let all these horrible things happen. But yeah. you have to pick your battles and know that some battles you can't fight all at the same time. You can't fight 35 fucking fronts. It's going to exhaust you and destroy you and then you're going to lose. Yeah. So you have to know I'm going to fight injustice in the world of creativity. I can do that. I can fight injustice in the world of exploitation of workers. I, or I can uh, fight injustices for women across the world or for, for people of color in America. I can do all of these things and fight as much as I can and give my part, but it's going to exhaust you, and it's yeah. going to fucking take and, a toll and, on you. And, and that's kind of, I mean, no offense to anybody who like looks at it differently, but to me, my stance is like, I'm just not going to give a fuck about anything, sit back and eat popcorn, and I guarantee it'll be the same result as putting in some work. I'm yeah. offended. I'm offended. All right, man. So well, no offense, and I'm offended. Well, that's because you're a Trump voting Jew. Well, what else, you know, <laughs> that's what, right. What else? Uh, Birds of a feather. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, no, but I mean, yeah, yeah. No, I just, I just feel like lay, laying back, and I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck yeah, I was going to say. It's, it's hard. Like some days I just want to be like, I'm going to go out in the goddamn street. I'm going to bust some goddamn windows down. I'm going to march with some people, yeah. and we're going to change some shit. And other days I'm just like, I just want to have a slim gym and watch tv because it's comfortable and like life is not yeah. always comfortable and so like i bounce back between those there's like i'm gonna fight and i'm gonna take a goddamn break for a second because i'm a human being and i want to fight for other human beings to be able to do the same shit where like i yeah. want a world where everyone can just sit back and eat their shit and just consume what they want to consume and enjoy themselves and not have the fear of someone ending their life or taking away their rights, mm-hmm. I will fight for that. Yeah. But, like, the, the main goal is for everyone is to be like, I just want to scratch my ass and be okay with someone I care about or I mean, things I care about and do something I love. But it's always going to be a fucking battle, so you have to be ready to take time off and take time to, to ramp it up. Yeah. It's just, it's so fucking difficult. And, like, yeah. I will fight by the side of the people who can fight all the time, and I will understand all the people who just want to sit back and go, I just want to fucking eat some popcorn, you know? I get all of it. And yeah. I'm going to fucking pendulum my way back and forth as much as I can to do what I can with my time and not exhaust myself and just tell some fucking dick jokes every now and then <laughs> yeah. and play my guitar if I and cum to. jokes yeah and Specialty. cum jokes yes <laughs> fucking I will tell the jokes I want to tell I will do the things I want to do but I'm gonna fight when I can where I can and, and pick my battles and know what fronts I work best on Cameron quick, for president quick, 2022 <laughs> quick question I always thought this as a kid and I don't know if it's a weird thing did you ever think that fucking frosting and strudels looks like a cum in a bag? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like, no, no, because I like sort of like, I remember fi- like when I was a kid and we found out about condoms and I looked at like a condom package and I looked at that strudel cream thing and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, where yeah, is this coming cut, from? You just cut the reservoir tip off and like, oh, yeah. strudel for <laughs> exactly. myself. This one's for me. Yeah. 
See, and this is the the intellectually stimulating sort of. Yeah. Yes. This is the, we've gotten into the real we, intellectual yeah. stuff. We need to fact check though <laughs> that with <laughs> our Varg Nazis out there, you know, uh, asking the hard hitting questions. Yeah. <laughs> what el- What else bothered you as a boy, Phil? What else bothered me as uh, a boy? As a boy, let me think. Uh, I, I I don't know, just just random things that dart into my mind. Uh, yeah. I was bothered when I got caught. Uh, we got our. I, I went to a Catholic school from huh? K to high school. It fucking sucked. I did that as well. And we were uh, the teacher put our desks in a U, and so that we would all face her. And I could not concentrate because I had all the camel toe shots I could get. Oh, so Jesus I, and, and so she so she <laughs> made me, uh, yeah, confess to the class. Hey guys, I've been looking at pussies this whole time, not listening to this fucking religious, you know. Uh, the the religious lecture today. Yeah, I, I guess uh, that bothered me. Sure, because I that, was like, that's a, a part of Catholic shaming. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you shouldn't <clears throat> always be just staring at a bunch of moose knuckle all the time because you don't respect someone. But also at the same time, you're a horny child who's got pumped yeah, right? full of fucking chemicals, and you're just like, who's going to see all this? The, 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 the internet didn't exist. Yeah, so, I mean, like. You, Catholic shaming for the stuff like that is like, don't have a boner. It's bad. The shit that comes out of your penis is the <laughs> devil. Yeah. And their bodies are the devil. And you're wrong, and they're even worse. And you're just like, I just want that's, to have a boner and be okay. <laughs> that, that, that's why that shit was so fucking ridiculous. When you, it's, it's like, okay, from 8 to 9, you have religious class. Then from 9 to... You know, nine and ten, you got history about crusaders slaughtering the fuck out of people, and then you got ten to eleven about science. That oh, we need reproduction. Oh, we need to jag off. Yeah. So you just come out of there fucking cross-eyed. Wait, in your yeah. science class, they told you you need to jack off. I don't think they told us in <laughs> middle school. They did a little subtly. Just look at you, just like <laughs> slam the hands on the desk, like. That was the Bill, day. are you jerking <laughs> off enough? You need the, to jerk the, off. The, the priest was subbing that day. Oh, yeah. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> now, boys, I want to make sure you don't go overhand. Knuckles up. <laughs> Dude, I, w- I was listening to this program because I've been uh, listening to a lot of science programs lately and shit instead of um, like it, just at work just mm-hmm. for someone to be in the background. And they were talking about how there's a state where it's illegal for the teachers in grammar school to teach the kids how to use a condom to to demonstrate. So they had this teacher like he's like, "Well, we're like he posted it on the sex ed site, but he can't use any sex words." So he's like, "This may be the wrong video on the wrong site, but today we're going to learn how you put a how I put my socks on in the morning." See, what I want to do is you grab it. You want a little room for the tip right here. Yeah. So you slowly slide it on all the way, all the way to the shaft of the muscles. <laughs> you know? And th- Because you want to do your work, you know yeah. what I'm saying, it, by putting your shoe on. Or wherever it's going to go. You may be wearing a sandal. You, you, you <laughs> get to choose what, you know, what kind of footwear you have. So I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah. That is funny. Yeah. Catholic school thing was... Uh a detriment to my mental health for a you know, long time. You know the one thing that I I love about it that I um cuz I have a step kid that I would love to put him in is I think it taught people Religion. in my generation you have to fucking do shit in life that doesn't make sense and that you have to do no matter what. Like have a job that you fucking hate. That's yeah. that's the one thing I learned from it. Like I got to cram this crap down my throat that I do not believe in at all and get a good grade in it. But you're going to have to prepare that for your life. Like, yeah, I, w- I would agree with that where it's just like, hey, sometimes there's shit that you can't control that you have to do, so just fucking do it. Yeah. And you can bitch and moan when you're not doing it to other people who also have to do it, but just fucking do it. Yeah. Like, I don't want to answer phones at work. I don't want to help customers. I don't want to do any of that, <laughs> but I do it because I want to eat and be able to wipe my ass and sleep at night. Yeah. So Is, is that how you interviewed? Was that your yeah. elevator speech? Like, yeah. I don't want to do this. I just want my Slim Jim. <laughs> He's like, Hire I want me. my Slim Jims, and I want a clean butt. That's I'm, all I want. I'm Filthy Phil. Give me a job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, Phil, do you have any questions you want to ask uh, uh, Cameron before we wrap up the interview portion? Let's see, uh... Let me see. Oh, who is your daddy, and what does he do? Mm. Uh, my my dad is Art. Um, he it works in the mortgage and loan departments of several banks over the course of my life. Mm. Um, he's a good man. He's played drums for his entire life. He's a musician for a long portion. And, no, uh, got music into my life. Uh, introduced an absurd, disturbingly stupid sense of humor into my brain as a child <laughs> that has stuck, and I think it's all his fault. <laughs> So two comments. So you've you've loved art 
since you were born. Yes. And do you have a hard time separating art from the artist? Yeah, I can't believe my dad's playing drums, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. And then, uh, uh, next one, top favorite comedians, bands, and 3-6 Mafia songs. Well, we went okay. over comedians. Uh, comedians, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, we went over, yeah. Com- <clears throat> uh, my top three bands, um, it ca- my top ten fluctuates, but I think my top three favorites uh, usually stay the same. So I would say Godspeed You Black Emperor, number one, um, Mars Volta, number two, and then uh, Swans, number three. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my favorite Three Six Mafia songs, mm-hmm. um, I would say Hennessy and Hydro. Um, uh, uh, what's the Rainbow Colors? That's a good one. And um, uh, Stay Fly. Stay. Yeah. Well put. Also, I don't know Three Six Mafia enough to be like those aren't Three Six Mafia songs. Hen- I was just but talking with somebody I the do. other day. Uh, <laughs> like when I was in high school, I was huge metal, nothing else. <laughs> and then like my senior year, I started listening to like hip hop and stuff. And it was like, all right, I used to listen to all old school hip hop. Let's let's listen to some of the the newer shit, quote unquote. And I found Three Six Mafia. I remember just like blasting Hennessy and Hydro <laughs> in my piece of shit car, yeah. pulling up to parties, and people are like, "Is white dude listening to Hennessy and Hydro right now?" And I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's an old song. It's a good one though. And they're just like, okay, this is strange. This is a strange moment for everyone. That's the melting pot that is Joliet. Yeah, no, I got to listen to Hennessy and Hydro with people at parties while we smoked blunts, and it was awesome. And, and everyone came together over Three Six Mafia. And did you also drink Hennessy? Uh, I actually never had Hennessy until I was like well into my twenties. Huh. Yeah. Fair enough. It's it's okay. I, mine always was a uh, one hitter quitter. Oh, and, that's a good one. And that's I think, a good one. And it's a funny story because I, I, I got into a fight at a show in some pit or something, and we're on our way back, and <clears throat> I was like, dude, can you put some music on? Because I was so fucking pissed they kicked me out, uh-huh. even though I was like the one getting the shit knocked out of me. And they put that on, and I'm like, I don't want to fucking listen to this because I thought it was about really good weed, <laughs> like a one-hitter uh-huh. or, or a crack, and it was actually about fighting. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I do like this song, man. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. No, I I used to rock with Three Six Mafia quite a bit when I was younger. Hmm. Hmm. Do you look fondly upon those days? Is it still something like you're not, well, obviously you're not ashamed to admit it, but it's like, this was a part of my life, I accept that, and it's who I am today? Oh, yeah, no. I I operate under the idea that guilty pleasures do not exist. Okay. Um, You should not be ashamed of the things you like, um, as long as they're not horrible, horrible things, like ethically horrible things. But like, if you like Three Six Mafia is like just southern dirt rap shit oh fucking go for it <laughs> i i love hootie and the blowfish they have been really? one of my favorite bands since <laughs> i right. was a child i own all of their albums i listen to their music at least two or three times a month i enjoy everything i i listen to darius rucker's solo shit before he went country when he was funk and had like great songs with jill scott fucking love hootie and the blowfish all right favorite hootie song favorite hootie song uh probably old man and me or uh, uh, not even the trees. Okay, you, you like Hootie, right? Album. You're 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 nuts about Hootie and the Blowfish now. I, uh, I own that album, <laughs> and I can <laughs> you're name, nuts. I can name four Hootie songs, uh, none of yeah. which you named. But. I used to uh, write on Hootie and the Blowfish message boards in the early 2000s like, yeah. with other Hootie fans. Sure. Do you the, have a name for yourselves, like Hootheads? Uh, uh, I believe they're called Fairweather Johnsons uh, because uh, they had that album called that, uh, and it was like the Fairweather fan idea. It's like, oh, you're rooting for this team, sure. that team, whatever. Um, and that was just like, I guess what they called them. I'm not sure. I, mean, I could be wrong. This was 2004 when I was writing sure. on these message boards. So you were a fair, you were a Fairweather Johnson before you came. You became a tow truck Johnson. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yes. So now you're a Fairweather tow truck Johnson. Yes, that is a hundred percent true. All right, Phil. Next on the list. That that was everything. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Speaking of like old ass '90s music, is like, I was. Uh, it was a pretty funny trip with um, John. Say nothing. Uh, mm-hmm. He used to be the guy who didn't say anything at our show, uh-huh. and he got sick of saying nothing. So. <laughs> so you kicked him off. <laughs> I, he, he doesn't like coming on as, yeah, as, yeah, as, it. As, to but, be fair he still doesn't say much on the show yeah yeah he's still yeah yeah he's still say nothing he's just not in the camera anymore oh fair enough he's just nothing no but uh we were we went to go see behemoth friday mm-hmm. at, with wolves of the throne of man at the gates and my brother and, yeah and your brother yep we we and it was dude it was just such a funny fucking trip there because let me see what it like so first, I, I, I'm picking up from his work in Elk Grove Village, which is like 10 miles from here. And 
dude, I have been on, I just got this, I, I just downloaded like this 90s mix and mm-hmm. I've been on an Alanis Morissette binge. Oh, Alanis Morissette. Some fucking fucking good, dude. A Jagged, Jagged Little, Little Pill. Pill. Jagged yeah. Little Pill is an amazing album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then even after that, I love that song, Thank You. Mm-hmm. That's like, I, I don't know. I feel like a Buddhist girl. <laughs> I mean, it's great. But um, so I'm, I'm putting, I have this on the radio and he fucking like, forcefully he's like he's like can you turn this off can you turn this he's, he's very he reminds me of like a very shy niles mm-hmm. from from fraser ah. yeah, but, but he uh he he um wait did you do something yeah i have a fraser shirt oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm a huge fan I, I, I need to get a home improvement shirt you ben need to narrate what you do yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but you could be taking up like sharpening a knife i would have no idea like this could yeah. be a plot to kill like Bill. niles <laughs> no. anyways um he um He's like, can you turn this off, please? Can you turn it? I, I had like, I don't know, one hand in my pocket on it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll put something else on. And I just put on a different hit by her. <laughs> He's like, dude, what the fuck? And he turns my radio off. And then I put on, all right, I'll change it. And then I put on like a different album by her. <laughs> <laughs> so he ripped the USB cord. I, he's he's super not in touch with his feminine side. Uh-huh. So so he, he just keeps getting more and more mad. And then we uh we go, we go to the show and... We we were cold as fuck. We didn't, dude. My my hands. I I looked like I had some disorder because they cramped up oh. and I couldn't unlock them because it was so fucking cold by the lakefront. It was like one. Did, did, I think it snowed that day. That was the oh, first Jesus. day it snowed this year. And like, dude, we fucking um. We get in and I I told he he the reason why I even took him. He doesn't know any of the bands. He thought we went to Slayer Farewell, uh, me, Bill, and John. Mm-hmm. And he's like, there's no way there's a pit that's crazier than this. And I'm like, we'll go to this show with us. Yeah. And that pussy stayed out of the fucking pit. Like he went in for like two sh- uh, two times, but the two times he did, I could tell, I could see that Atlantis more set rage. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, they're not t- doing that. But you know, the funny thing was that I went to go take a pee. Like th- there's always something that happens when I, when I go out and I didn't know the show was sold out. So, it took me like 20 minutes to get to the bathroom mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is going to take me an hour to get back in and not be that douche. That's like, all right, I'm going to squish in here. Just mm-hmm. oil me up. And you know, so I'm just like, dude, I don't fucking care about anybody here. I like this band. And I just start running thinking I'm not. And, uh, have you ever been to house? You've been to house blues. Yeah. I didn't know that there's like a separate walkway and a railing for the bar. Mm-hmm. And that first row for the railing is like VIP reserved. Or Americans with Disabilities Reserve. Yeah, and I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I kind of like skanked, tried to yeah, jump move the wheelchair out of the way. No, no, I landed on someone with cerebral palsy on a wheelchair. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was so fucking bad. You owe somebody money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, shit, I got to get out of here. And I start running in the other way. And I ended up getting uh, in there. But I, I don't know. It was just... It was just a pretty funny night. Then, then sure, the whole ride, for back. everyone but the person with yeah, yeah. policy. Then, then the then the whole night back, we were uh, me, me and John were arguing about how he thinks it's really. G- he's like, he's like, man, you listen to Alanis Morissette like you're on your period and you have a bunch of cats because I I normally have two cats, mm-hmm. but um, uh, Kelly, my fiance, she, I'm like, you know, I got a fucking man cave here. She wants to foster cats. I, I'll put up with it, whatever the fuck it is. As long as she cleans the diarrhea from the table. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's I, a fun story. Oh, God, no. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, no, yeah, so we ended up fostering four extra cats because they, I thought we were getting like one extra, but mm-hmm. I guess they're all siblings, so they have to go together uh, or they need some oh, CBD man. or anesthetic to go over the depression of- oh, I fucking hate cats. So <laughs> I'm, a, I, I'm allergic and oh, all, almost sh- all of the cats in my life have destroyed my life. Oh. I, I used to live in the basement of a, a house um, a few years ago that I lived with my parents and th- they kept the cats down there. And then my sister got these cats and she still to this day refuses to admit that they were her cats. She said they were our cats. No, they weren't. <laughs> And these cats stayed in the basement with me, and I like I routinely would wake up with two cats on my chest staring at me in the middle of the night. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't breathe because my nose is so stuffed up because I'm allergic to them, and then everything I owned was covered in piss because they she didn't get them fixed. Oh man! So they would go into heat one after another, and then when they caterwauled, they did not just go like oh, fuck me now. They were like screaming at the top of the stairs. It's like, for hours pissing on everything I own. I'm, now I'm getting pissed off. I'm, God damn it, I hate cats. No, this is what you were talking about earlier. You get passionate, the I energy rises. Like, 
sometimes I can I can like sit with a cat and like a cat comes to me and just sits on my lap. I can pet it and like I'll deal with like getting a little like allergic to it. You gotta set this nice up cat. to to not offend a cat lover, okay? Yeah, <laughs> no, I no. I no. I have had multiple times in like my life where a cat like. I just like vibed with the cat and was like, no, I like this cat. Yeah, yeah. Like I had an ex-girlfriend who had a cat and her cat did not really like like going around other people, stayed with her and like her parents and stuff. And this cat just once like came up and just sat on my lap. And nice. she was like, he does not do that ever. And I'm like, so you, okay. So, right. so, so you had me some... and this guy are cool now. I'm like, I was cool with this cat. But like other cats, it's just like, no, nah, I'm yeah. allergic to them. They're going to be... My, fuck my, me up. my cats are chill as hell. I didn't know there were like these cunty cats until we did this fostering thing. Like mm-hmm. I was like, holy fuck. Because these ones, yeah, it was um the the one of them, I've never heard, I, I want to record it to make some weird fucking music because I never <laughs> heard sounds like this. <laughs> yeah, no. Cats um, make some weird fucking noises. Yeah. Like, it's not adorable little meows all the time. It's just like guttural demonic yeah, noises I, from dark corners of your home. I, I, I was playing uh, Xbox and I had like my external drive hooked up to, for like music and mm-hmm. I thought it was having like a meltdown because it got a spring stuck on its uh-huh. paw. So I was like, <laughs> like yeah. I'm like, what <laughs> the f-? And the funny thing was that later that night, um, I've been like exercising a shitload to try and get rid of anxiety. So I joined this gym and I didn't realize, like, that cat, nobody trims its claws because of how fucking cunty it is. So you could hear it, like, on the fucking, on the floor and shit. So I go to I go to, to this gym to, like, try it out the first day, and everyone's staring at me. And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm not, like, that bro with the tattoos. I kind of look like a homeless person who has a membership. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why they're staring. And I didn't realize that um, it had, like, uh, like anchored itself into my shoulder every single night since it's came it, since it came so like all these scabs broke and i just had blood going down my shoulders <laughs> through my shirt as i'm on this fucking elliptical and like yeah this guy is homeless <laughs> and he's getting he's r- bleeding like, no problem guys just stigmata <laughs> yeah. it happens it happens yeah. talk about the insanity workout I'm just, I'm just yeah. bleeding oh my god getting yoked brother <laughs> <sighs> yeah it was it was so bad <laughs> that's all fucked right. up no, I had um, those same cats. I had a party once uh, when I was like uh, in my early 20s in this house and like all my friends are in the basement and the cats are getting kind of anxious because it's most people they've ever been around. And one of the cats, uh, this black cat that my sister affectionately named Cat because mm. she's an asshole. Is it love short for, you. for Katarina? No, just Cat. Just the word Cat. Hey, Cat, get over here. And the cat walked up in front of my TV and just looked at me and all of my friends and then just lifted its tail and pissed on my Xbox. Yeah. And oh, my man. friends were like, this is the best take we've ever seen. And I'm like, I'm going to lose my goddamn mind. Oh, I, man. Yeah, I, um, uh, we, we talked about it before, but I used to, like the past decade, I, I hung out with a really bad group of people. Mm-hmm. It was, it was uh, I guess they called it the murder shack or just the shack in Des Plaines. It was this, long story short, it was this kid who, his mom left him this whole house because mm-hmm. she got some boyfriend in California and he, like, have you ever seen Gummo? Yes. He, it was Gummo there. Uh, it was fucking, uh, like, no. it was nice and it was dude, fun dude, and the, it was... I, I keep saying, the, fr- the first day I came there, there was a bag of fertilizer spilled on the dinner table. And ten years later, it's still there. People, people have OD'd and died there. It was, it was like, it was a shithole. And, and that, yeah, no, that's fucked up. And I, I remember that um, the guy, the owner, I think he had like seven cats when I came there, and he would just let them roam. And then eventually, it came to like ten or twelve from fucking. And then it went down to like eight again because I guess two of them got stuck in the wall and just died there. So they were rotting in the wall. I couldn't fucking believe this. Some sh- people should not have <laughs> rights. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's them. That guy. That guy deserves nothing ever. Like yeah. that's when my like there's a small psychopathic part of my brain like uh, that like I think it's whatever ego or something in the brain that just like wants to destroy things you don't like. Yeah. And like when I hear about people like that, that's what like. So in this case, so in this up. case, is it the people or the cats? It's the people. Okay. It's the people who are bad and like. Yeah. When I hear a story like that, and like this person's like, I'm comfortable living in this entire yeah. situation. It's like you don't, you have lost your rights as a citizen. Yeah, you can stay there 
fine. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to take anything else from you. But you don't get to vote. You don't get anything from us. You have you definitely need you your have, children taken away. You from have you. absconded yeah. your ability to be a part of society. Yeah. You're gone. And like the rest of my brain has to go. You just, just don't do that. Don't be like that. But I just hate those people. To be fair. In their defense, I've been to some pretty fun parties there. Oh, yeah. yeah no, I have partied in horrible shithole, like, holes in the wall, toilets don't work. Like, you know, I said, I've gone to punk shows. I know a lot of people <laughs> who no live more. in squalor. And it's yeah. like, do you know that there's a hole in your drywall? And there's things moving in the drywall <laughs> while I'm taking a shit in your toilet with gray water. <laughs> and there's no toilet paper. And I, like, oh, man, I used to party in this house. Um, in Joliet, of all places, um, and they uh, they had like fifteen bathrooms in this place, something like that. It was an enormous old radio <laughs> no station bedrooms. that got turned into like an apartment complex, and it's just like this hole in the wall garbage place where my friends hung out. And I remember I was taking a shit in this bathroom upstairs once, and there was no toilet paper, and there was no one else upstairs, and there was like no cell phone reception. So I was like, "What am I gonna fucking do? I got shit all over my ass, a shit in this toilet, and I just found like a a child's bib." on the ground <laughs> and i don't know like none of the people i knew who lived there had children so i'm like fuck it and i wiped my ass with one side and like kind of folded it wiped <laughs> yeah. my ass with the other and just hucked it out of the window and i'm like i am a garbage person i am become it's punk as fuck man <laughs> i yeah it's punk as fuck but i have become the thing i hate yeah yeah it's like but i also don't want a dirty butt R- R- <laughs> rob told us at, at, at this house i didn't even know this because it died by the time i came there but uh, the the owner used to have a fucking like cockatoo or parrot that was like two feet huge, Jeez. but it fucking hated people, mm-hmm. and yeah. it would only be perched in the closet. So <laughs> when you went to the bathroom, like randomly, you'd, ah! oh like, my god! So so even if you went there to piss, you would shit yourself either way. <laughs> like it, it was really loud. And yeah, no. The the other thing I thought was funny was I would um when I couldn't. Play, when I couldn't find a place to practice with my band, we'd go there in their basement, and the basement was like hoarder pile. Ma- imagine trying to air vacuum clothes, boxes, shit into one thing and just lather them with slime. That's what the corner of the basement looked like. Uh. And because it was that, so the drums were set up there, and I'd always look at the drummer like and have this cute smile on my face, and he's like, "What? What, what the fuck? Are, are you? Are you like sending me signals? What's going on here?" And I and there was a bunny nest. So there'd be bunnies like hopping Aww. in and out of holes on this fucking pile. Aww, something adorable and all yeah. of the squalor. <laughs> to feed the cats. That's what this song is about. In this slimy fucking basement, there's a bunny nest. Yeah, you know? yeah no, I'm I'm well familiar with horrible places to get fucked up in. Yeah. I uh, I think it's time we take a little so. break. Oh, I was going to end the beginning. So, no, uh, I got John. No, no it's not. All right. All right whatever. <laughs> no, that's what you No, no, I, I was telling uh, John uh, th- that... um. He started arguing with me after the pit about how he thinks I'm goofy that I have this many cats. I'm like, dude, well, do you ever plan on having a kid? He's like, yeah, probably one. I'm like, dude, his whole fucking life, he's had like these really tedious aquariums, Mm -hmm. those people that wash them every six hours. I'm like, yeah, is that what you, like, you can't take care of a fucking cat and you want to have a kid. Is that what you plan on? You plan on having like a paralyzed kid that you sift some, you know, fish food in his mouth every six hours? Like, I don't know. Wait, hang on. I think I missed a step. What? What's that? You were talking. You're on the way back from the show. Yeah. Oh, and and he was just it, making it, fun it of me. Tangented off in like nine directions. Oh shit! That entire time. Oh wow. So you and John are coming back from the show. Yeah. You're listening to Alanis Morissette. Yeah. He hates it. He hates it, and I keep busting his balls because normally he busts my balls, and, and I'm. He was busting your balls about cats, and there, that's the end. He found the end. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So he was busting your balls about cats. Yeah. And then he wants to have kids. Yeah. And I'm Got like, it. dude, like, what the fuck? Like, you know, I mean, is that possible? Like, you can tolerate uh, kids, but you can't tolerate pets? I don't know. Definitely. You think so? Yeah, dude, it's your species. You're okay. also, like, naturally designed to love a kid. And they won't have diarrhea all over your dinner table. Well, <laughs> let's not go that far. They will. They, they definitely will, and more well. places. The one thing I found out or from being someone will uncle, wipe their ass with their bed. Yeah, like, <laughs> <Right. laughs> that's true. Um, but like, when I was younger, like I knew kids were a handle and a hassle. Yeah. But like, I didn't know the fucked up shit that happens as being a parent. And I am not a parent, thank fucking Christ. But I am not a parent. 
but like my brother had a kid when I was like about 20 and I remember him like going like, yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's weird. There's a lot of things nobody prepares you for. And I like, Oh, I think it was like two or three weeks in. He was like, my daughter just projectile shit everywhere. And I have never been prepared to watch another human projectile shit yeah. like on my hand, over my hand, all over the floor, onto the wall, just happily projectile yeah. shit like a fucking squirt gun, just shooting shit out. And he's just like, I don't know what to do. No one has prepared me for this. <laughs> and like, that's the shit that I would just look at a person who's like, you want to have a kid? Are you yeah. prepared for another human to shit in your hand because you want them to just shit? Or to yeah. cry all evenings. Like, yeah. you hate your drunk friend who's crying because her <laughs> boyfriend broke up with her a week ago. You can't handle this thing that can't coherently give you the reason why it's upset. <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna. You're not prepared for that. No one is prepared for that. You'll no. never be. You, ju- you just gotta adapt. Yeah, yeah. At least my dog. I understand. It's never gonna be able to tell me why it's upset, and sure. I can take it to someone who can figure that out. But like, I don't want a thing that's half me. Just yeah. Projectile shitting anywhere. I projectile shit into a toilet on a daily basis. Yeah, well, because- look at you <laughs> show off making the toilet just duking all over the place. <laughs> I am not prepared to take care of another human yeah. that does that. I, rem- I remember the first t- like with my stepkid like uh, when we we got this house exactly a year ago and the something was fucked with the plumbing upstairs and he's going to the bathroom and I'm like so pumped because I got home from work. We're gonna order Chinese food. And we're getting a shitload of egg rolls. And, dude, when kids shit, they eat nothing but fucking sugar. Yeah. So it smells like oh, radioactive. Their diet is shit. So this toilet is overflowing. And he's just walking across the house with shit down his leg, toilet plunger in his hand, and just naked. And, the, f- I mean, dude, I- I'm a first-time parent. What am I going to look at? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing naked? And I- I'm like, wow, that 10-year-old dick looks like an egg roll. I guess I can't eat today. <laughs> like, like that's all I got stamped in my fucking mind. You know? <laughs> that, <laughs> like, is such, that is like a nightmare to me. Just like the idea of like a small human with shit everywhere, naked, just like a man. I don't know what to do. It's like I don't know what to do yeah. either. What do you want from me? I'm not as, for this. as you can hear, the toilet overflowing yeah. in this. Oh my god, it was so bad. I've been in the moment where I've made a toilet overflow, and I am helpless. I'm just like, there's people everywhere. I don't know what to do. And then there's someone else who's relying on me. It's like I'm not prepared for this either. Yeah. Uh, gotta go. Bye. Yeah, gotta go. Okay. All right. Cool. Take care of that yourself. I am not ready for this. Speaking of gotta go, bye. Break? Break? Break. Ready? Break. Break. Don't do that.